Hello everyone, nice to meet you all. My name's Tony Credland. I'm the course leader of MA Graphic Media Design. It's going to be about a 20 minute, half hour presentation of, of the course. And then there's the chance to ask questions at the end. Um, I'm hoping you've all seen our website and things. So this is this should be additional information. So the course runs over four units over 15 months from October to December each year. It's a research and workshop focused course encouraging experimental critical thinking. And what we mean by that is that um, it's very much a hands on. We want you to be making graphic design throughout the year and we want you to be doing research to help those experiments. And we're very much hoping that applicants are coming from a critical point of view. Um, the staff on the course this year are Paloma, Ricardo, Carlos, myself and Bryony Quinn. Um, likely to be similar next year, um, things might change. Also supporting the course, we've got um, Shura for academic development. He helps um, participants with essay writing and other academic side of, of the course. We've got Nigel does language. Um, because we have a lot of international students, we have a, a specialist language tutor um, with the course who sees people weekly. And we had Javier was our ethics and sustainability um, member of staff, but she's just left. So there'll be someone else replacing her by the time you arrive next year. And hopefully you've seen this website. This is the MA Graphic Design website. It's um, magmd.uk. You can see in the right hand corner there. And um, that gives you a little bit of background to the course, the participants. It shows some links to their websites, past participants, and some of the projects that are coming out of the course, which you can see with these little tabs down the side, line, which forms a volume. It gives you a little bit more than the LCC website talks through. Yeah, so here's here's an example. You can click on the participants and you can see their final major projects, um, images, and often a link then to their websites if they've uploaded it. And the tabs down the side, as I say, this is a, a publication that we put out every year, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, and all the texts of those publications are up on the website, but it gives you a good idea of what happens on the course as well. Of the last five, six years, we've done six issues of Alarm, which forms a volume. So MA Graphic Media Design explores the use of graphic design as a critical tool to investigate the complexities of contemporary society. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but um, but we are a graphic design course. That's something I need to emphasise because a lot of applications I get people get stuck on the word media in the title, and um, we are a graphic media design course, as in we do graphic design, but we use lots of different media to do graphic design. Um, it, we're using graphic design to explore subjects, so we we want you to come to the course with some interesting subjects that you want to explore that's very much open to you whatever subject you decide to pick and we will help you use graphic design as a critical tool to investigate that and um, how to use you know the visual um, methodologies to actually explore complex subjects and often they'll be contemporary subjects about society at the moment with studio practice um, course, cultivation and maintenance of a critical practice. So we're very much a weekly course. You come in every week, probably about two to two and a half days a week in the studio. Um, and then the, the rest of the week, we'd, that's up to you. That's independent practice. That's for you to, to work out where you want to work. That could be in the, in the college. It could be in the workshops of the college. Um, it could be at home. Um, but always producing new stuff every week for the week afterwards, developing your projects. We have skills workshops that run throughout the year. Um, design, typography and layout design is one that we, we run throughout the whole year. Um, because we find that that's a, a useful thing because not everyone starts the course on the same level of, of graphic design skills. So, and being quite an international course, people are coming from different type layouts and things so that's something we like to to 
enable throughout the year every other week there'd be a, a, a day's workshop on that and then we also throughout later on in the year we have um, skills workshops in three-dimensional applications or film editing or other other issues that whatever's um the cohort would like to explore and um, we won we run what we call a reciprocal studio workshops in, in the unit two of the course. This is a collaborative unit that all the postgraduate courses do at LCC um, and where we invite in um, design studios, design researchers um, from outside the college to come in and run workshops with you. Each year we try and get about four um, critical designers to come in and run a workshop. We'll give an overall theme to it and the reciprocal nature of the studio is that you're giving um, them your critical feedback and they're giving you critical feedback as well on the project so it's a two-way um way of working we, we these are these are some examples of the ones that we've done in the past over the last few years so yeah i, I won't read them all out but you can see the sort of people we get fraud david bank marwan kabor and ruben patter came in 2018 machand politique fraud run that again demystification committee modes of criticism from portugal and confusion of tongues from berlin came in 2019 you can see that the theme that year was on distraction the next year the theme was one of many worlds where we had adaptive capacity evening class from london haunted machines and paul enerman came in to run the workshop these workshops are quite intense they're sort of two to three weeks long in january um so you, after you finish your first unit the start of the second term and we jump straight into these and they're quite fast and furious and and quite fun workshops to do and they, they the idea of them is to try and give you um lots of ideas to, to to think about before you start exploring what your major project might be um unit one that I sort of ran over a little bit there is more about exploring what the course is about. So we, we're getting to know everyone, we're getting to know what the course is about and the language that we use in the course. That's really what unit one is about. But unit two is the quite fun open one. And here's 2021's A World Where Many Worlds Fit, where we had Hannes Bernard, Common Knowledge, Florine Mislin, and Silas Monroe. That one was online because that was during COVID. Covid years and actually the, the year before was also online but now we're back to being face to face so this year's um, workshops were face to face. Um, one thing we really push on the course is a socialization of practice in progress so we're really interested in people seeing your work we don't hide in the studio as much as probably you'd like to a lot of the time but we try and get you to take your work outside of the, of the studio and yeah in a work in progress show at the very least but maybe take it to symposiums around Europe now they're coming back on online after Covid and and other ways of, of um, socializing your work to a wider audience so you can get other people involved in your project not just at the end of the course but also whilst you're doing the work during the course and um, these are some of the examples so this is uh, what is out of doors is our work in progress show sort of title that we run every year this shows how during the covid years we did it online but we're we're back to doing this within the college we use the the exhibition spaces within the college around the summer term to do these work in progress shows and invite other courses we do have it open to the public but it's mainly we might focus on some other ma graph design courses in london and invite them to come and see the show some sister courses at St Martin's or Camberwell. These are some symposiums that participants and staff have been doing in the last few years. This was a few years ago at ECAL in Switzerland, a design writing symposium. On the stage there you can see participants from the course and staff members there doing active research. We've also held the Graphic Design Educators Network um, Symposium at LCC. It's a, this is a UK-wide network of graphic design educators. And this year, we, we well, that, that year, that's about 2019, we invited everyone to come to, to London to our college. And instead of us running the symposium, we left it to our participants, the students, to run the symposium. So it was quite interesting that the, 
all the educators or the tutors from around the country were being taught by our participants and it and it meant that we had a quite an interesting engaging um, symposium yeah that sort of repeats a little bit what i said before but another way that we make our, st our stuff public is a line which forms volume that i mentioned earlier this is a publication that we hand over to the participants the students to run every year this is a a print-based publication um and we're in our we've done six issues so we'll be we're, we're starting to work on the seventh issue now each issue has a theme but it, in essence it sort of it, it holds some of the final work from the students those who want to maybe half the course maybe have a couple of spreads in there plus interviews with maybe the lecturers lectures and workshops leaders from the year and because it's also theme based that then the participants will also go and interview people that they think are relevant to that so it becomes quite an interesting book about graphic design in that year and includes some of the student work so it becomes quite popular we we print about a thousand copies and distribute them globally so it does have a quite a big readership um but the important thing about it is that we basically we have a a design studio will come in to guide um, but we step back and we let a group of 10 to 15 participants run this project from the start. So they decide the issues, they, they decide the, who they want to interview, they go and interview them. Um, they then design it and they print it in the, in the college and then they distribute it and they hold a symposium right at the end with the people who have participated in it. So it's quite a big project and it's run alongside the unit. So it's a, outside of the assessment criteria but it's quite a, a useful thing for people to have in their portfolios and um yeah it's been very popular over the years this was issue three gives you an idea these are the first five issues were varied in size um and yeah but they all had a common theme they had these glyphs and they had um the text started on the front cover was a common theme this is the symposium of issue three so this is a few years ago and then, as I say, it's also available on the website. And um, you can see all the PDFs of all the, all the past issues are there. The last issue, we've changed the format. So we've gone to more of a, a square of format um, with, with a coil binding. And this means that we can now do all the binding and, and printing in-house in, at the college, which, yeah, just makes it a little bit more hands-on. There's a lot more to be learned from the process of, of printing. And um, yes, but it's, it's handmade maybe about 10 participants were involved in the making of this issue and then maybe about 20 are involved all together when you include the symposium and the printing and the distribution side of it this was a symposium for this year just happened in january we have the, the last year we moved it it used to be in december but we've moved it to january so after the course has finished in that month after the course has finished because we found that things you know around the final show and trying to do this book launch and the symposium was quite stressful for everyone so we moved this um to a little bit later in the in the year but m most of the participants are still around in january so that makes sense um, at the end of the year, we also have a, a final year show. We try and get a little bit experimental with that. Um, last, this is from a few years ago, where we were actually filming the the um, exhibition um, 24 hours. So it was actually available around the world. That was the before COVID, actually. But we continued these sort of ideas of trying experimental different ways to present graphic design because graphic design doesn't often it's not intended to be in the gallery so um, we try and think well wh why show graph design in a gallery space and um this alongside the launching of the of the publication line which forms a volume is normally the two main ways that people get to show their work outside at the end of the course yeah so i'm just going to run through the staff on the course there's slightly a little bit more detail for you is this myself tony credland um I come from a political graphics background. My interest is in is activism and graphic design activism on the streets. That's where I come from, a screen printing and book and magazine design, I suppose, is my background. Um, yeah, so I'm involved in a lot of um, 
archiving showing histories of, of political graphic design which we've done over the years um, at the design museum and in the college and uh, part of a, a network called the sorry the divine design activism research hub which is a, a network of postgraduate students phd students and staff that are interested in politics we come together and try and um propagate the idea of, of politics and graphic design but that's not my only interest so don't worry if you're not into politics i can talk about many different issues carlos are the main tutor on the course he does lots of exhibition design and book design there's a few examples of his work he did the show for the ba graphic design a few years ago um this should be moving but um I've, I've disabled it because it's getting too too bigger for the thing. But anyway, it's, it was, it was the signage system for the actual exhibition were people wearing the graphic design and people wandered around the show wearing the graphic design instead of having posters and things. So. Um, Ricardo also teaches on the course. It, um, Ricardo and Paloma, the next one, were alumni from the course. They've been about five years out from the course. So they've come back and are teaching into the course, which gives them a lot of experience of what it's like to be participants but also um, they bring a lot of energy because they're they're working around London and Berlin actually between the two and Portugal these are three areas that they work this is Paloma's work as well very interesting graphic design and Bryony works with us Bryony Quinn works with us mainly on the writing side of the course so this is Bryony's PhD work, but um, and she write, does a lot of design criticism in the in the press around graphic design. But she she will help you write the larger um, yeah essays that you need to write within the MA course. There's a a five thousand word essay is the main bit, so it's not too onerous. Oh, and an another tutor, um, Sophie Demay, um, she's moved to Paris recently, so she might be with us next year. I'm not sure. Um, but she used to do work with a lot with the exhibitions of the of the of the show so the work in progress show and the final exhibition in college she would often get involved with and tamir won't be working with us next year so i should have taken that out and um, we also have as part of the course of production space what we call our rizzo room because we, our rizzo machine is based in there um it's not there's lots of other workshops around the college this is just one that only our course currently use so we've got our own old Rizzo machine and we, within this room it's a sort of a, a messy space that we can use outside of the studio where which is obviously a little bit cleaner and this is a space where we've got um staplers light boxes slide projectors um digital projectors and and Rizzo machines for you to play around and get messy with and we also have a as part of that as another side issue coming out of the course of the alignment from Zordian book but we also have the the rolling drum was a press that was set up a couple of years ago by the participants and this was really at, at the start exploring the idea of what is a design press what could it be how could it uh, work alongside the course not necessarily only using the Rizzo machine although this is just an example of one of the books they made on the course a bit more playful workshop that they set up um but it also the the idea of the, the rolling drum is that it will be the, the participants work if you produce 20 or 30 copies of your final work that becomes part of the outcome from the the press and the all the other publications that come out of the course and we're, we're building a website at the moment that will distribute all all these things to a wider audience so during the year we run workshops where you'll be doing publications but again this is outside of the units and it's more to do with them you know maybe 10 or 15 of you that are interested in doing print-based work can can do that and again go through the college print stuff in the in the litho printing area and bind it and then we'll probably distribute it as well so lcc is quite famous for its workshop areas they're they're really accessible and and they're very good i mean it really is a draw for the for the college we have um a, a really large photography area where you can photograph your work dark rooms to to um yeah to, to do your film got 3d space um where you can do wood or laser cut or perspect cutting um and there's a digital space for more digital computer work but there's also alongside that actually probably i don't have pictures of 
there's a, a VR and AR space now, computer area. Um, what else is there? Yeah, there's the screen printing, letterpress more, and book binding more traditional areas that are really fun to work with around the college. So they're they're all available. They're, that we we don't actually teach into those areas. These workshops are available there for you to go to, um, if you feel you want to experiment in that part in that part of the course in that area. Um, you just have to do an induction and then you can use these spaces throughout the year. Yeah, and the other two, I suppose, areas that we do use quite a lot is the print finishing area where they've got a big litho printing machines. They've got a big flatbed A1 printer. They've got a, a massive Heidelberg um, B2 size printer that will run you know, thousands of copies. And then they've got a, a B2 size printer, one color one. And then they've got you know other machines that will cut your paper and all that sort of thing in there but a very useful space for making as well come to the end of the talk now so practicalities um the there is a clive bailey scholarship of five thousand pounds towards the cost of living it's available for one applicant unfortunately only every year uh, they've got to be resident in the uk for three years and the deadline is in july so if you are applying for the for the course even if you've applied and maybe you haven't heard yet it's worth looking up this scholarship because it's, it's five thousand pounds it makes a, a big dent into the cost of the course but there are other um, um fees available so there's a 20 percent discounting fees if you were from within um university of the arts there's a postgraduate scholarship and funding that's worth exploring as well and there's some other there's a loan available and an international postgraduate of fifty thousand pounds. That's that's more for people who are coming from, I suppose, countries that without the usual, um, yeah, from slightly more disadvantaged countries around the world, shall I say? So it's not not for people if you're from the UK or Europe or from America, um, but other other areas of the world to try and encourage other people coming to the into the college into postgraduate area. Um, my last slide is more general inquiries and contacts that you can find out about. That's the end of my talk. I probably rushed that a little bit. 25 minutes, that's not too bad. So there's an, a chance to ask me some questions now. I can't see any of you. I'm sort of talking to myself in, in my home, but um, I think you write your questions into the chat. Yes, and... absolutely. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, that was quite useful hearing about the course. Um, and sort of the student work um, and, and prospects. Um, we've got a few questions um, here. Um, the first one is asking, is it possible to do collaborations um, with other students across other courses um, within LCC and supposedly within the UAL? Yeah, so um, when we, yeah, so at the start on the course, you're, you're generally working on your own project, but um, when you start on the course, the first few weeks we do a collaborative project where to try and get everyone to know each get to know each other. The unit two is a collaborative project where, as I said before, you're working with um, outside um, designers and collaborating also within the course. Um, but we do welcome you to, you know, if you wanted to work with somebody working in sound arts or something on your major project, we would welcome that. Obviously, we'd have to, when it comes to assessment, we'd have to separate what's your work and what's their work but we're quite happy for collaborations in 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 that sense um but um yeah but got got to remember that at the end of the day we're on a MA graphic design course so the what we're assessing will be on you know the graphic design side of that course not the how good your audio is for or sound arts is yeah thank you um could you talk about the cohort of the uh, course please so what's the composition numbers um uh, student backgrounds um demographic and so forth yeah so um most participants on the course will have done a, a degree in graphic design and probably would have worked for a couple of years outside rather than coming straight from the BA although that's that's not a problem if you've got if you really want to do that I do I would encourage people to take a couple of years out before doing their MA um we're a cohort is about 48 to 50 each year so that's the size of the course so it's quite a big ma in that sense but we have four tutors so you actually be taught in tutor groups around 12 
13 people so it's not like you're you're sitting in a room of 50 people every day and we do do obviously when we do lectures and things that's to the whole cohort but then we break you down into smaller groups and you get a, a personal tutor and then you also can talk to the other tutors as well we're quite a tight little group that so we get lots of opportunity to discuss things um, and we're quite an international course at the moment. I would say you know, quite a lot of Asian students, quite a lot of South American, um, a couple of African this year, European and UK students. So it's quite a good mixture, but it's quite an inter international course. Yeah. Any Thank you, Tony. Um, we've got a few. Um, do you mind telling us what's the main differences between um, GMD and illustration and visual media courses at LCC? Yeah, um, yeah. The MA illustration course is is very much more. You're, you're developing your 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 style of graphic design and work. Uh, sorry, illustration and trying to work out how you can. Sort of work as a as an illustrator in the outside world on ma graphic and media design we're mainly looking at how you can use graphic design to look at social issues and it's sort of it's a in a theoretical way so sort of how how can you use graphic design to explore your issue if you come to us with an issue about i don't know mapping in in australia and how the mapping has changed in the google times or whatever i don't know whatever subject you decide to pick we will help you then use graph design to explore that research that find who else is looking at that subject area and create a piece of graphic design at the end that um raises that issue and speaks to a wider audience about that issue and and does it more successfully because you've researched it through graph design um yeah it's, it's hard for me to really say the difference apart from that you know illustration is very much about how you, this style of in which you work and then um, and then it's how do you get that use that to um create you know your work in the studio but our, ours ours work will lead you towards building your own studio maybe or maybe work in teaching or go and work elsewhere but you hopefully you'll be able to have the skills therefore to actually look at your your subjects that you're looking at with a new um yeah ability through new ways of researching Thank you. And I suppose following on to that, how would you say it compares to graphic branding and identity course at LCC? Yeah, with, with, <laughs> so I haven't um, I haven't read the handbook lately, but um, yes, we we are sister courses, as in we do work alongside each other. But graphic branding and identity is a lot more about the branding process and looks a little bit more towards advertising and how. You know that that side of of graphic design, whereas we're we're I suppose a bit less commercial in that sense, and a little bit more about political subjects or social subjects that you might be looking at as a as a participant. Yeah. Any more? Thank you. Yes, there is a one more asking that sort of to in comparison, how does GMD compare to, and um one of the courses that someone else is sort of trying to compare is media communications and critical practice um i suppose that's quite an easy one to, to take forth media communications yes i, th I think that i i must admit I, I i'm not quite sure what they what they do throughout their whole year i mean i i, I probably know as much as you do on about that so um i would imagine judging judging from the title that it's a little bit more theoretical than ours um, and we're a lot more practice based. So we, you know, we we do encourage you to to do the research, to do the theory, but also to get messy and to make things and to make mistakes and to learn from it. And you know, it's very much still graphic design course is that we're, that we're doing. Even though that might range from someone doing letterpress on one end to someone doing AI sort of um, work at the other end. You know, we're we're quite broad in the in the mediums that we cover, but um. Our, our attitude or our way of of using graph design to explore subjects is is quite unique to the course i think yeah fabulous now would you mind telling us a little bit more about the unique selling points of um magmd for lcc and supposedly how it compares to the sister courses at other ul colleges oh i don't, I don't like to um yeah so so we've got 
Camberwell's course and St Martin's course that often I do see applicants apply to all three obviously I mean I think if you read our web pages they are quite different in what we suggest we're interested in um how do I say this positively without saying anything bad about the other courses um because <laughs> they are friends who run the other courses um I think there's cultural difference between the different um, sites. So St Martin's has a different history and culture to Camberwell and to LCC. LCC has a, a long history of, of graphic design production and is probably quite famous for its um, relationship to design studios and and the real world of graphic design. Um, as I said earlier, the the workshops is quite important at LCC. You know, they they are probably the best in the university. I would I would say, and your access to them is is probably easier here. Um, we've got a very good library kind of in the college. Some very good galleries in the in the college. Um, yeah, the the different colleges and the different courses have different personalities. Um, you can I think the best way to see that is by looking at the work that's produced from the courses. So by looking at our website, and um, and seen obviously and obviously probably the tutors that are teaching on the course with have got slightly different interests and, and come from slightly different angle to each other but yeah they're all good courses i mean but ours is is the best one <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um we've got another question here asking would you say a lot of alarm go into teaching roles uh, after graduation and sort of perhaps broadening that question is what are the career paths our students usually take after graduating yeah i mean i mean the course um probably feeds in there is there is a large cohort of the alumni that have left if i look back at the alumni of the course probably a good 10 percent have ended up going into teaching and because of the, the way that we teach in the theoretical side of the course it does help that sort of route in but m most and there may be another 20 to 30 percent maybe set up their own studios and the rest probably end up in in quite good design studios working for other people that does depend on obviously wh where you want to end up but um yeah and we we have some really interesting design studios that have come out of of the course but um yeah teaching is 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 has that background and we used to have a part-time part of the course that that will be coming back in a few years but where a lot of the people tutors from other courses would come and and join the part-time course one day a week and and learn how we taught on the course and then go back to their their place as well so so what that was concurrent teachers and future perspective teachers but um yeah no we have a, a long history of people going into teaching but that's you know that's probably only about 10 15 percent of the of the people we have in the course and um, most of them, most people end up working in studios and doing very interesting graphic design Great, thank you. Um, do you have any advice for uh, how to put together a portfolio and a personal statement? What are you looking in particular? Yeah, so in, in your portfolio, I mean, we want to see, you know, maybe four or five projects. Um, we'd like to see the outcome. We'd like to see the journey through that project. So where you started and where you ended up. So we can sort of see your thinking as you, as you explored that, you know, what, what else you looked at, what inspired you, how you move towards the outcome and then seeing the outcome of that. Yeah, we don't we don't just want to see just outcomes by themselves. Um, yeah, four, five, six projects should be enough for us to get an idea. Um, we're interested in the graphic design aspect of that as well. So we're, we're interested in the subjects you pick. And, and the graphic design skills that you can show from that. We do have people applying from outside graphic design. That's not a real problem because um, we, you know, normally those people bring something else to the course as well. So maybe, you know, we have people in the past who are lawyers, we've had people who are writers, we've had, you know, people come from other disciplines. That That's all fine. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, the course is a graphic design course, so we'd expect people to get up to speed with their skills in graphic design to be able to communicate through graphic design. Um, yeah, sorry, I, I sort of talked over myself a bit there. What else was, what was the rest of the question again? Um, personal statements uh, and portfolios. Yeah, so so the personal statement would be, um, that that's the personal statement 
and the and the project proposal what we asked you to put in that's really where we're sort of exploring you know do you have are you interested in subjects outside of just going to college and things so you know what are your other interests and we're very open to what those are we're not we're not being critical of what you might be interested in but we're interested that you've got some passion for a subject and that you're you're interested enough and you want to explore it through through your subject area and if you can sort of talk about that and through your potential um project proposal we'd like to see you know okay you've you've picked this subject area that you're interested in where do you start where do you who else has looked at that area who else are you reading about in that area and where could it go as a project often though those major project proposals don't end up being your major project on the course obviously that you know a lot of the teaching we do in unit one two and three building up to your major project which is unit four um obviously will will often sway you off to, to new areas of study but it's, it's an indication to us what of what you're interested in and that you've got a, a passion for something you know we want people who are really interesting and interested to explore things on the course so that's what i'm looking for really yeah thank you and now moving on to our last question um so do guest talk uh, guest speakers and guest workshops are only available to um magmd students or other uh courses within the program area perhaps or school are also invited and the the work the big workshops we do where we invite the outside people to come and run workshops they're within our course um but there is a there's a lecture theory series called the critical forum run by the design school itself so that that's available to all the design students and even students who are not in the design school but um that's the ba and postgraduate areas all go to that that's that's there's a lecture every week for that and then within the course we will actually also invite other people in to do lectures like around as i say the the rolling drum press we might get some people in just for the course to talk about um, their practice around that and also the participants are working on a line which forms a, a drum will bring in other lecturers to, to talk about the subjects that they're interested in doing for that issue of a line which forms a volume so there is other lectures that go on throughout the year May, that those ones are mainly within course but there's there's so many lectures going on at lcc and at ual that um you'll you'll just have too much choice to go to things actually there's just lectures all the time everywhere <laughs> um, half the problem is actually working out which ones you, you can actually get to I suppose at the end of the day that's a nice problem to have when you have too much choice yes, um, yes. right moving on to my last question where can um, prospective students check out current student work or um, previous students work yeah, so on the LCC website for MA Graphic Media Design, there's some examples of some work there, and there's some students speaking about their experiences. And then on our, our website, www.magmd.uk, um, that's also a, a space where you can see, you can go through and see the participants in the past, and if if they've uploaded, I mean, the base the students are named, and then if they've decided to upload a link to their website, you can see that there. Um, and then the through the publications alignment which forms volume um, so these these publications are available online and you can see the student works each year in there so um yeah that, as i say you can download the pdf and you can see probably at least half or three quarters of each year's student projects are in those publications so um the the issue six isn't up there yet that's still been processed but um but the foot earlier five issues were up there so you can get a good idea of the course another, another book that actually was based on the course maybe 10 years ago was is visual research by russ besley and ian noble and um, that's worth looking at and that that covers a lot of projects that came out of the course you know maybe 10 years ago but um still relevant to how graph design can be used to explore subjects yeah Great, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you all for joining us. Um, if you do have any further questions, please do take a screen grab or take a note of the email addresses you have in front of us. Please do go away and explore further the course page. Um, 
we hope to see your applications roll through in the next couple of months and hopefully you starting in with us in September. Before we end, uh, do you have any last words of wisdom, Tony? We look forward to seeing your applications and it'd be great to see you on the course. Go for it. That's it. Perfect. Thank you very much once again. Thank you all. Uh, we hope you have a lovely afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. Take care and goodbye from us. See ya.